Several new agriculture policies were recently signed into law by Governor Walls. Senator Tory Westrom is the chair of the Senate Agriculture and Rural Development Finance and Policy Committee, and I spoke with him this week. The policy provisions of the Agriculture Omnibus Bill were among the winners of the regular session because they were passed and signed into law. On the Senate floor, you said, we find agreement because we all like to eat. One of the new laws concerns the cottage food industry. What are some of the changes? Well, Shannon, uh, the cottage food industry is something that's really flourished in the state of Minnesota. I think of this as uh, grandma's pickles at the church bazaar, um, a young aspiring uh, cook that uh, ha does a part-time job or cooks uh, in the evening or weekends to uh, uh, show neighbors or friends in the community uh, some of their great cooking talents, whether it's their jams, whether it's uh, cupcakes or special cakes or breads. Uh, any, any of that, uh, cottage food industry is what we call that, um, from the, from the uh, canned pickles, uh, jams and others at the church bazaars and, or local festivals that people like to sell. Uh, 20, 20 some years ago, there became an issue with, uh, requiring more and more inspections and commercial kitchens of these small entrepreneurial businesses that really didn't see themselves as a big business. Uh, church bazaars, uh, for example, have been going on for years and years. And uh, the requirement of the licensing and the inspections and the commercial kitchens were looking to put these people out of business over what many people would say are not common sense policies. And so uh, the House of Representatives, uh, former representative Al Junkie, I remember, uh, uh, help lead the charge myself and others to uh, make sure there's an exemption for the cottage food, the new entrepreneur that's just starting out and uh, doing this in their, oftentimes in their own kitchen um, with family or, or neighbors. And so the cottage food industry has flourished since then. There's over 5,000 licensees in the state of Minnesota. We have two tiers and the first tier is set at a threshold of under 5,000 dollars a year of sales. The second tier was $18,000 of sales. So it's, as you can tell, it's the small sole proprietor, uh, small business. Uh, what we did this year was update those numbers. Uh, the second tier is going to have some additional training uh, that they partake, partake in. Uh, there is a, a continued $50 fee, which they were previously paying, uh, but they can go up to $78,000 of uh, gross sales in their business. As they uh, continue to grow, uh, they can maybe become a sole proprietor out of it as a, maybe a full-time job. And that's what the Ag Committee heard as some of the concerns people were having a tough time of being able to quit their regular jobs and move full-time into uh, being a small business. Uh, but if they go beyond that, then they have to do more commercial kitchens and inspections. And uh, that's uh, what many of these do as they grow, but uh, they need to have a place to uh, flourish and incubate and grow to begin with. And so uh, the second, the first tier, excuse me, uh, will also be updated for inflation as of January of next year. So and so gonna, uh, those are some of the changes. So you're going to make that a little bit easier for them. Let's talk about hunters for a minute, because there's a change that would allow what you referred to as the garage guys to be able to process deer or other wild game on a part time basis. Um, was this not allowed before and how will it be different now? Well, that was another provision in our bill. And, and let me just touch on two quick other points in the cottage food industry and then I'll the water uh, garage guys. Uh, one other, two other changes. One, those small cottage food industry folks can also use an LLC as a business. Uh, that was not allowed prior. And so we've allowed that and expanded that business opportunity. Secondly, they can also get into pet treats. Uh, working through the Department of Agriculture, uh, they can offer pet treats as part of their small cottage food business. We also did the wild game, guy, uh, wild game processors known as the garage guys. Uh, what was happening there in the last few years, the inspections had been uh, added to these wild game part-time processors. Um, many, many of us would think of them as uh, folks that 
debone the deer or take the hides off the deer and then give hunters their meat back. But it's the gory, icky parts of hunting, the cleaning out the deer and deboning the meat, a very gross and if, if, if you've ever done it, but it's part of reality, part of life, part of hunting. And so uh, this just allows those uh, that don't do this full-time, uh, part-time, uh, up to $20,000 a year for wild game, like ducks or pheasants, or up to 200 deer. They can do it in their garage, just like they've done, and not be subject to commercial kitchen inspections, which was part of the changes that were happening from a couple of years ago, and that wasn't intended. And is there any concern at all about chronic wasting disease? Um, you know, if deer are taken from those management zones, is can they ensure proper disposal? There is, and that was a piece of the provision that we negotiated through. Uh, in, in deer that are processed by wild game uh, processors or garage guys, if you will, they need to dispose of those deer the same way any other hunter in that endemic zone would have to. So if they've if they're in an endemic zone, which is a handful of counties in Minnesota are, they would have to process those or put them in a dumpster, a DNR dumpster. And that's the same requirement that hunters and that take deer in those areas have to follow as well. And we made sure that the garage guys would do the same process, same disposal to uh, deal with the concern of chronic wasting disease. Before this bill became law, an EMT or a paramedic could have been charged with a gross misdemeanor for treating a canine police dog injured in the line of duty. I assume this was an easy law to change? This was a common sense law to change. When uh, this was brought to uh, Senator Matthews uh, in the Senate and uh, members in the House of Representatives, uh, our Ag Committee uh, oversees the veterinary practice uh, in, in the state of Minnesota. But even the veterinarians were supportive of making this common sense change because they're not on the scene. And if that immediate medical attention wouldn't be uh, administered to a police dog, uh, many times they would, they would be deceased. And so it was just common sense to make this uh, provision in law that would kind of work like a good Samaritan law does in Minnesota. And if they need to administer some life-saving help to those police dogs temporarily till they can get to a veterinarian or a uh, place of, uh, of operation, uh, that, that's what they can do and not be subject to criminal or, or other penalties under the law. Now, finally, before we have to go, negotiations with the House on the omnibus agriculture budget are ongoing. And while consensus has been reached on these policies, we're still waiting for an agreement on the numbers. Without jeopardizing your talks, what are some of the sticking points that you're trying to work through? You know, our agriculture uh, bill is mostly wrapped up on the finance areas. Uh, we are very close. Uh, Chair Sundin and the House of Representatives, myself and our conferees and our Ag Committee members have been working through those numbers uh, once the House and Senate leadership were able to set the targets, uh, along with the governor's office, uh, by May 17th, just at the adjournment of session, uh, we, we've now worked through those numbers and uh, have general agreement uh, that will be coming out real soon. Uh, but broadband is one of them. Uh, we, we've come up to agreement on that. Rural broadband is under our funding jurisdiction as well. Uh, we're going to have, and that's a public number, $70 million over the next two years added into rural broadband. That's the biggest number we've injected into rural broadband in the state of Minnesota's program. And so we're excited about that because we wanna get those unserved areas of broadband served. And so uh, uh, the house chair and myself are working through that again. Uh, everybody in Minnesota likes to eat, legislators like to eat. And so that's why agriculture, oftentimes we can come to agreement real quick because we all enjoy the great food that our farmers provide for us and make sure our state is well fed. Senator Tory Westrom, I wanna thank you so much for your time today, thank you. Thank you, Shannon, I appreciate the opportunity.